Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I'd like to talk to you about the kind of possibilities that might exist for you in your dreams if you're open, if you're ready. Now, in my lifetime, I've had two occasions in which dreams have literally changed my life, and I've reported on both of them in previous instances of this program, the dream concerning my Uncle Harry and the dream I report in the very first segment of the In Present series. Well, I've had two other dreams of a different sort. These are dreams that were very vivid and powerful, and when I woke up from the dream, I knew there was a poem there. I had dreamt a poem, so I sat down and I wrote these poems out. They're better than any poems that I might have tried to consciously write. In fact, I think they're pretty good, and I'm going to read them for you and with my glasses on and looking down at the paper. So you'll see a few illustrations to illustrate the poems while I'm reading. But the point is simply this. I, I cannot force my dreams to produce poetry, but at least in these two occasions, I was open to it when it happened. And the, the lesson is that your subconscious mind, I'd like to call it your superconscious mind, is far more powerful than you can imagine. And there is great wisdom in there for each of you if you're open to it when it comes. Now, the first poem I'm going to read is called The Jewels of Wolf Messing. I had a dream, and I know that it's true, about the ancient jewelry of a great Polish Jew, Wolf Messing, the mentalist and entertainer by trade, changed the fate of the world on the day of his raid. Alone he entered the Dhaka of Stalin. His guards couldn't stop him. They had to allow him. Wolf Messing, the mentalist, hypnotized them with ease. They thought he was Leventry Beria, chief of secret police. He used no costumes nor any disguises. He had only his jewelry, his psychic surprises. The rumor now has it that the communists were wary. They wanted such talents for the Soviet military. Messing became Russia's greatest entertainer. He traveled the continent. He served as a trainer for small groups of scientists trained in physiology, bent on discovering the secrets of parapsychology, so that the Soviet Union would one day become master of the world through its psychic A-bomb. It has been 40 years since Wolf Messing's project, so, have the Russians achieved their object? Are they the masters of space, time, and beyond? Can they call forth hidden powers with the wave of a wand? Oh, they've taken curly in photos and psychotronics devised. They've measured the aura and wood magnetized. They hypnotize over distances through mental control. You couldn't fit all their psychics in the Hollywood Bowl. They've measured the language of plants talking to plants. They've studied the voodoo and juju magic in African dance. They've used psychic powers against the chess master Korchnoi. Could anything stop them against our American boys? In the past 40 years, they've done many a wonder, made a dog with two heads. They control rain and thunder. They can manipulate brain waves over thousands of miles so that millions of people will nod when they smile. But they've missed the greatest secret, and it's been just one thing. They've lost the magic jewelry of the great wolf messing. These jewels are very ancient, garish, and tipsy. They're the kind you might find on a wandering gypsy. In fact, it was from wandering gypsies that Wolf Messing acquired them. They've been charged with gypsy magic for over a millennium. 
These jewels were the source of Messing's magic powers, and when he died, they returned to their owners. But gypsies can travel all over the place from the heart of Romania to the Beta Breakers race. There are gypsies in boxcars, there are gypsies on horses, there are gypsies doing sit-ups in the local par courses. The jewelry of Wolf Messing might be anywhere on a ship in the ocean or up in the air. The jewels of Wolf Messing include pendants and rings. Whoever can find them can live like ten kings. They have all of the powers of Aladdin's magic lamp. Are they resting in the knapsack of some grizzled old tramp? I dreamt of this jewelry and what it can do. I dreamt of the people who are seeking them, too. There are fashion designers and quaint demonologists, growth group leaders, movie producers, and Scientologists. There are mafia dons and KGB spies. There are South American dictators with greed in their eyes. There are seekers of power and seekers of truth. There are seekers of sex and seekers of youth. The rings of wolf messing are like the Holy Grail. Many will seek them, and many will fail. Like the Maltese falcon, like the ancient Hebrew ark, these jewels can ignite a most passionate spark. From the steppes of Siberia to the Argentine pampas, from the Mongolian desert to the cornfields of Kansas, I dreamt that I had them. I dreamt they were mine. I could share with my friends all the pleasures divine. My heart started pounding, my eyes rolled in their sockets. All power could be mine if I put them in my pockets. But such magic is an illusion from Cape Town to Nome. So I left the jewels in my dream and brought you this poem. How can I tell you that magic is not real? What of Psy research? and the power to heal. Why would I leave all those jewels in my dream? Am I a skeptic after all? Am I what I seem? No, the jewels in my dream are where they belong, like the power of poetry and the power of song. Magic is an illusion, and magic is real. This is the paradox that the jewels reveal. Wolf Messing, the mentalist, lived an unusual life, full of great glory that overcame horrible strife. Wolf Messing was a master and more than he seems. He had the power to live from the jewels in his dreams. The second poem is called Old Egypt, and I had a dream the night after visiting the temple of Osiris in Egypt in the town of Abydos. The ways of old Egypt are quiet and deep. It's dead or awake when the world is asleep. The gods of old Egypt are subtle and bright. They awaken the dead to a life in the light. Osiris, the god king, the brother of Set, was married to Isis and his love was well met. Set killed Osiris, the husband of Isis creating upheaval and darkness and crisis. Set wanted to sit on his brother's royal seat, so he cut Osiris into pieces of meat. He scattered those pieces all over the Nile. For Isis to find them took quite a while. She put each piece of meat into Osiris's mummy. And when she found the penis, she knew she had her honey. She flew like a hawk to the organ of life, for she was a goddess and she was a wife. Isis grabbed that penis with all of her might. She gave birth to Horus, the hawk god of light. Horus, the sun god, was Osiris the king, reborn as a hawk with a beak and a wing. He chased Uncle Set and drove him to flight as the sun drives away the darkness of night. Yet the night and the day are like brothers that fight. The light needs the darkness, the darkness needs the light. So Seti, the pharaoh, 
who was named after Set, built the temple at Abydos so we would never forget Osiris, the god king, white mummy with skin of green, lord of the afterlife, with Isis, his queen. Osiris reminds us that death is not real, for even a mummy has powers that heal. I hope you enjoyed those poems, and let me leave you with this thought. What awaits you in your dreams, and will you be ready when it comes? Thank you for being with me. Thank you.